Hello and welcome to my review of the Hoover Pure Power Bagged Upright Vacuum Cleaner. Well, I unboxed this machine a few weeks ago and wasn't overly impressed by the quality of the components. I don't know how it's going to perform, I haven't really used it very much, just whipped around briefly with it but not given it a full test. I'm reserving the full testing for the video that you're about to watch. So as usual I'll be getting my bag of filth out and spreading a whole load of muck on this carpet in front of me and passing the pure power forward and back through the mess just to see how well it performs. Also I'll be going into the kitchen and throwing a load of rice, flour, sugar, couscous, all sorts of things on the kitchen floor to see how well it picks up debris on hard surfaces. And finally I'll be testing the performance of the attached hose and cleaning tools. Hoover claimed this is a stair cleaning machine so we'll be seeing how far this hose actually stretches up the stairs and I'll be testing the pet hair and allergen remover. This is a pet's version which is why it comes with this turbo head and when I gave it a quick going over when I unboxed this initially I was quite impressed by this turbo head, it seemed to be very aggressive. The brushes spun uh, quite a lot actually, it was very forceful and it has quite stiff brish bristles on it so I'm thinking it could perform quite well on pet hair. So I'll be putting some pet hair on my stairs and upholstery just to see how well it removes pet hair because it's a pet's model so you'd expect it to perform on pet hair well and of course when I do my carpet test there will be a lot of pet hair mixed in with all the general dirt that I'll be putting down. So here it is, it's a pure power. Now this model has been running since I believe 1997, this particular body shape. It's had various upgrades, if you can call them that, during its lifetime. What Hoover have mainly done with this machine, have they have increased the wattage to, this one actually is 2100 watts. This, they haven't really made any improvements, it's still basically the same machine but with a higher wattage motor. The brush roll that's now supplied in this machine isn't quite as good in my opinion as the one you used to get with the cleaner. It used to be made in the UK this, of course it's made in China now as all Hoover products you can buy in the UK, they are from China. So it's an old machine, it's been running a long time but it is quite rare in the UK now, it's a bagged upright vacuum cleaner. If you want a bagged upright vacuum cleaner, your choice is limited, especially at the budget end of the market. Now obviously Hoover occupy this, this section in the uh, budget end. And also Panasonic, I believe, are the only other budget priced upright cleaner you can buy that has a bag. All the other cleaners are bagless. Of course, you can still buy a quality bagged upright cleaner from the likes of Sibo and Miele. They both do excellent bagged machines, but you know, you're talking a higher price. And if your budget won't stretch to that, basically, really, it's only Hoover or Panasonic that are widely available. So at least I give Hoover credit for still offering a bagged cleaner. Unfortunately, Vax, a company that makes some good products, some not so good products, but Vax in the UK do not offer any bagged vacuum cleaners, which is a shame, but there you go. They do actually in their commercial line, I do, I, before you write in Vax or comment, sorry yes, your 3-in-1 tub Vax is a bagged machine, as is your, you do some commercial vacuum cleaners that are bagged, but in the domestic lineup it's bagless all the way. So if you want bagged, this is one of your choices. So we'll be seeing whether it's a good choice or not by the end of my video. Hopefully it will help you decide whether you want to spend around about 80 to 100 pounds. You can get them cheaper. There are other variants of the Pure Power still available with high and lower wattage motors. So from 70 to 100 pounds, I would say you can pick a Pure Power up. This is an older model because it's got the 2100 watt motor, all current newly produced pure power models have a 700 watt motor and possibly next year I may produce a new video demonstrating this 2100 watt pure power against a 700 watt one. I'll do a direct comparison and we'll see 
if the reduction in the motor wattage has really had a detrimental effect on the cleaning performance. I hope not, I don't think so. But for now, this is the model I've got, this is the model I'll be testing. So without any further ado, I think first thing, I'll go into the kitchen, spread a load of muck down on the kitchen floor and see how this pure power copes with all the dirt. Well, you find me crouched down behind a whole load of mess that I've put down on my kitchen floor. Now, I've thrown down things that would possibly find their way onto an average kitchen floor. I've not put down some bizarre things that you'd never spill on a floor. These are the sort of particles that would be spilled on any kitchen floor, really. So, what's down here? A lot of different size particles. See how it copes with different sizes, different textures of debris. So we've got some flour, we've got some rolled oats, there's some couscous, some rice, some salt, and finally the largest particle that I've got to test on the Pure Power are some dry dog biscuits. These are like small bite, but they're fairly large really for a vacuum cleaner to cope with. So if you have cat litter as well, this is a sort of particle that if this machine will pick this up, it should be alright on cat litter as well. I'm not sure what it's going to be like, to be honest. Now this is an upright cleaner with a single motor, which means you can't turn the brush roll off. So the brushes will be spinning as I pass the machine back and forward over the mess. It does have a specific hard floor setting. It's the same setting I'd use for short pile carpets. It's also Hoover Claim is for hard floors as well. So it's one up from the lowest setting. The lowest setting on this machine is classed as intensive clean, where you have the brush at the lowest setting to get you know, your deep down dirt from your carpets. So we're just going one up from that, which is short carpet slash hard floor. So I'm going to turn the machine on, pass it slowly backwards and forwards, right through the middle here, and then we'll see the sort of results we get. using an upright vacuum cleaner on a hard floor, especially one that you can't turn the brush off. I hated it. Oh, it feels like it's doing a lot of scratching. Now, looks quite good initially, doesn't it? I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, probably not, but what maybe you couldn't see, what I could see and feel, is an awful lot of, especially the, the larger particles, just being flinged right back behind the machine has scattered a lot of this debris behind me and it's now where I had this dirt contained in one area of the kitchen it is now right behind me scattered all over the dining side of the kitchen. So like a lot of uprights like the SIBO G1 Professional that I tested a few weeks ago that didn't do very well on hard floors it scattered the debris behind it, just like this Hoover Pure Power. And again, the SIBO is another upright vacuum cleaner that you cannot turn the brush roll off for doing your hard floors. Saying that, yes, the larger debris, a lot of it has been scattered back. Behind me, I can see mainly the rolled oats the machine scattered. But on the fine particles, it actually has sucked them up. It's done okay with the flour, the salt, and the uh, couscous, I believe. Yes, I can't see much couscous. There's a few particles of rice that I can see flung behind me. Um, as for the dog biscuits, I think they're mainly here. I don't think... I think one of them went up, making rather a, a loud noise as it went up the machine. But basically, I think it's just... it's skimmed over those. So, it's hard to judge the performance. If you're not picking up lots of large debris, it might be okay, but to me, a vacuum cleaner and hard floors, an upright vacuum cleaner and hard floors aren't the best solution. You're better off sweeping the floor or using a suction cleaner or some uprights where you can turn the brush roll off. Twin motored uprights, they do a lot better. 
in general on hard floors. I wasn't expecting great performance from this, I was expecting a lot of muck being scattered back and that's exactly what I got from the pure power. So for hard floors it's a thumbs down. Okay then, it's not, not done very well on the hard floor but let's see if it can redeem itself on my bag of filth in the living room. Will you find me in my living room? I just spent a few minutes making a right old mess on my living room carpet. There is all sorts down here. The pet hair, bits of paper, general household dust. And I went a bit mad with the flour, put far too much down, more than I, I was planning on putting down, so that white stuff is flour, it's not drugs. And I've, I've put on a few extra rolled oats for good measure. So as you can see, on the front of the Pure Power, we have four different height settings for the cleaner head. The high setting here is if you've got luxury carpet or when you're using the cleaning tools. The next setting down is for medium carpet or rugs. This setting is for short pile carpets and hard floors. This is the setting I used it on when I tested it in the kitchen. But for the deeper clean I'm using this setting which Hoover class as intensive clean. So if you want to pick up pet hair and well <laughs> the sort of mess that I've left on the carpet in front of the cleaner I think intensive is the only setting to use. So I'm going to line up the machine, reposition the camera and we'll pass the cleaner through the dirt. Right, as I zoom out onto the path that the Pure Power has gone through back and forwards, we can see the result. And it's not too bad. Now, of course, it's left the line of shame, quite a prominent line of shame, all along here. That is due to the fact that that's where, on the underside of the cleaner, that's where the belt is, and obviously the belt has a guard over it, a piece of plastic, so there's no brushing action here, which explains that. I can deal with that, of course, by overlapping my strokes as I clean, but that does show you quite a visible line of uncleaned area. The area that it has cleaned, where the brushes are, is pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. It's managed to leave a bit of paper there. There's a little bit of a scotch porridge oats there as well. But as far as the pet hair goes, that's gone. The flour too, and there was a lot of flour, that's all gone. So all in all, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty impressed with it. Four out of five. Obviously this is an extreme example of dirt. You're not going to get this sort of dirt on your carpet, but I have to put a lot down because you need a good visual demonstration. It's all right me just going over the carpet as normal, but in order for you to see it picking up, I need to put a lot of dirt down so the camera picks up on it. But all in all, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Better than I expected it to be and certainly better than it performed on carpets. Right, before I clean the rest of this mess up, what I'm going to do is get the turbo nozzle out. I'm going to connect the turbo nozzle to the end of the hose and just run through another area of this, doing a similar thing, straight back and forward through the middle, and we'll see how the small turbo nozzle copes with all this dirt. Okay, well here's the pet hair and allergen remover you get supplied with this vacuum cleaner. And it has underneath here a rotating brush similar to the brush you get on the upright cleaner. So as you turn the machine on the suction from the cleaner powers turbines inside which in turn drive the brushes round. You can actually get full access into this in case you need to 
clear any hairs that got uh, caught in it or if you have a blockage. There's a little catch at the back here, you just have to press that forward and the whole back of the unit comes off. So now we can see how it works. Here are the turbines that are moved around by the suction which in turn via the little toothed belt here will move the brushes round at a very high speed. Now the advantage obviously of having a rotating brush it should deal better with more difficult to pick up litter like pet hair and um, clinging threads and fibres. The disadvantage of a turbo nozzle is it tends to add to the noise of a vacuum cleaner. So let me just pop the nozzle back together, that's it, click it locked and then we're going to switch the machine on and pass it back and forward through some of this mess. I've deliberately chosen part with all this flour so I think it's probably going to make right quite a mess of the inside of this but I can just take it apart and give it a clean afterwards. But this is an extreme example again so we'll just see. I've never done this sort of test before using a turbo nozzle so it will be interesting to see how it works on all this muck. So I'm just going to reach over, turn on the cleaner. Obviously it will be noisier with this, with this head on plus it's quite near the camera so the microphone will pick up on the noise. But if you can block your ears for a few seconds we'll just see how it works. Now, not as good as the upright, but again this is extreme, but it's, it's not bad. You can see a definite path, especially where the flower was. It has left some of the flower here, there's some look, and it's, it's left some of the hairs as well. But again, this does have a line of shame. Might be not quite so noticeable here, but there is a definite line where it's not picked up anything and that again is because of this part here this is where the belt is obviously so you're not going to get full width brushing right across because this part will be unbrushed there is a tiny portion here you can just see there is a brush at the end but it's not obviously done a complete sweep these little indentations at the front if you can quite see. I'll take the head off. They do help with the larger particles, little side, little suction channels at the front and there are side suction channels as well. You see how it's shaped here. This also helps because it, if it's too bogged down into the carpet it will restrict the brushes going round. So this just allows air into the head to keep the brushes from rotating because some turbo brushes, once you go onto a, a carpet or your upholstery, if they're not strong enough they can just slow down and they're pretty useless. But this did actually maintain quite a lot of the suction. I'm just going to just do another part again, just a bit quicker this time, just do a little bit of an area, just back and forth quickly as you would do it as you would normally cleaning. Switch the machine on. rather rather noisy and <laughs> doesn't sound very healthy either it's it's got a horrible sort of grating sound about it so I'm not sure about the uh, durability of this particular head um, like I said in my unboxing video I wasn't impressed with the quality of the components on this machine 
It has a standard year's guarantee. If it lasts you a year, that's fine. If it doesn't, well, obviously, Hoover should cover it under the guarantee. It might last just over a year. It might last five years. <laughs> it's, it depends on how often you use it, how you maintain it, how well you look after it. But all in all, this, this is a machine that I think is quite a disposable machine. It's not one that's built to last as Hoover only give you a one year guarantee. And most manufacturers nowadays give you two years at least on their cleaners. Some give you five, some give you six. Hoover still only give you one year. I'm not sure if they guarantee the parts for five years. They used to, but you only get the parts guaranteed if a Hoover engineer fits them and you still have to pay for that. But for the extreme example, it did quite a good job. Probably better than a straight suction nozzle, but hang on, there's no probabilities here. Instead of thinking, well, it probably did better than the straight suction nozzle you get with a machine, why not try it? I will, so on board is this nozzle. So this is the next nozzle I'd find suitable for that sort of work, but again, only fixed brushes here on this nozzle and they are very, very soft, more like dusting brush softness really. But I'll move the camera back onto another uncleaned area and we'll see if just suction alone can perform as well as the turbo head. Right, so I've fitted the standard head. This is suitable for doing your curtains, your upholstery, you can do your stair carpets with this as well. And some pure powers that don't have the pet hair slash allergen remover, this is the nozzle you'd get with it. You also get dusting brush, I'll show you that now. You get the dusting brush. You also get, with this cleaner, if I need to reach back, you get one extension tube and you also get this, which is a long scabbard crevice tool. Now, it's much longer than the crevice tools you'd get on your regular cylinder cleaners. Most of them tend to be about sort of this sort of length. So it's a nice length for getting down the sides of your chairs, down the sides of your, like your fridge, freezers, uh, around your washing machine in your kitchen. You can actually connect the tubes together so you've got more reach if you want to reach up to do those cobwebs. And you can put any of the small cleaning tools, including the turbo brush, directly onto the end. So for example, I've got the dusting brush here on the end, so that means you can reach up top of your curtains, curtain rails, pelmets, ceiling fans if you've got them. But this little demo to see how it performs, the suction performs just on this area here, I've got it connected directly to the handle which you can do also, that's useful if you're cleaning the car and you need a little bit more flexibility, you want to get into the smaller spaces under your car seats, you don't want to be attaching your extension tube. Okay, I'll just do this area, I'll just do it roughly back and forth and just see how the suction alone copes with the rest of this mess. <laughs> There is a lot of suction with this cleaner. It is very powerful, especially for an upright. But although, yes, it's got all the flour and most of everything else, it has left the most difficult thing to clear up in most families, the pet hair. Maybe a bit hard to pick up on camera, but it's absolutely covered. So this rather soft, wimpy brush doesn't do very well, even if you're to scrub and scrub away, it's too soft to get real, really any agitation whatsoever on the carpet. Well, before I take the Hoover Pure Power to my stairs to see if it will reach up the standard flight of stairs, as Hoover claim, I still have an awful lot of mess to clean up. You can see me actually sitting in the clean path. I don't fancy kneeling on this part of the carpet, but I'm quite happy to kneel on here. And you can see a definite difference between where I went over back and forth with the Pure Power 
as opposed to the areas I haven't cleaned yet. But I can't leave this, I still have to clean up the rest of this mess. So I'll finish off this section of the video by removing the rest of this dirt and then we'll take the pure power with its attached tools up the stairs to see if it will clean stairs successfully. It's cleaned everything up. As you can see, all the dirt that was on my carpet is now tucked away inside the bag of the Hoover Pure Power. The bag's inside here. And we'll remove it. Now this bag is supposed to be self-sealing. When you take it out of the cleaner, And it actually has worked. As I pulled it out of the machine, the en entrance to the bag closed. So you don't see any of the dirt. That's quite a good little feature. It's just a standard paper bag. Hoover haven't produced any fleece bags for the Pure Power. Well, they, they did. I do have a few still, but they don't produce it anymore. They did a, a much better fleece bag. But that bag is full of all that muck I showed you on the floor and it's safely tucked inside. Looking inside the bag compartment, see how well the machine has filtered the air through the bag, it's not bad. That's a better result than I thought. You can see some of the flour there that's gathered on the inlet, but on the whole, yes, some, there is some dust. Yes, I can see it now. It's hard to pick up on camera, but there, yes, can you see there? So the bag has let some dust through, some fine dust. There is a further filter here to protect the motor. This is the motor protection filter. If I can, it's hard to get out. There we go. You can actually wash that filter. The motor is housed underneath there. So that stops any larger debris from getting through into the motor and possibly causing damage. There is a final filter on the back of the cleaner. One thing I will say about this, it's 2100 watts and it kicks out a hell of a lot of heat from the back of the machine. This is where the exhaust vent is. I'll show you better if I remove the hose. This is the onboard hose. And here are your onboard tools as well, your dusting brush, your furniture nozzle, your turbo brush, and your extension tube with the scabbard cleaning tool housed inside. Here's your final filter. I think Hoover claim HEPA and already I can feel the heat. This 
part is very warm. Now it's more like a fan heater, you'd expect it's 2100 watts, not very efficient. I suspect a lot of the energy isn't going to provide the suction, it's providing a lot of heat. Fine if you live in a cold house because going around your house using this machine will certainly take the chill off but that is not what it's meant for, it's a vacuum cleaner. Here is the final washable HEPA type filter and it's pretty pretty good actually for Hoover, it's got good seals around it. This is the test really, we want to see if there's any dust. Well actually no, the real test now actually there is there is dust in this compartment here. Now as long as the dust has stayed in there and has not passed through the filter, so this is the real test if there's any dust on this part. Again, I'm not doing, it's not scientific, but that part is still clean. So hopefully in some way it does prove that the filter has done quite a good job. Obviously it's only been used for the brief time you've seen on the video. So obviously in time, this will get black as you use it with the carbon dust from the motor, but because you can wash it, you'll never get it thoroughly cleaned again. It'll never be as clean as it was when it was new, but you can still help to maintain the power, the suction of the cleaner by cleaning your filters and obviously replacing your bag when full. Okay then, that's the Pure Power's performance. For any of you who want to know, it's got a six meter cable, which is pretty short. Six meters isn't very long. Um, you might find you ha having to unplug and replug. And it weighs approximately, when it's all set up with the cable wrapped around, 7.4 kilograms. So it's not too heavy, but it's not what I'd call a lightweight cleaner. Anyway, enough of this. Let's take the machine into the landing or the hall and see if it'll stretch right up to the top of the stairs. Right, well you find me at the bottom of my stairs in order to test Hoover's claim that the Pure Power is a full stair cleaning upright. Now you need that if you've got stairs in your home and a lot of modern houses don't just have one flight of stairs, they have two. You need a vacuum cleaner that's going to be able to clean them safely and effectively. Now, there's nothing worse than reaching halfway up the stairs with the cleaner and finding it's not going to reach and then it's the balancing act of trying to hold the machine in one hand and direct the nozzle in another. So a lot of people give up and they purchase a smaller cylinder cleaner or a handheld cleaner to do the stairs which is a safer bet. But the next option is to have a vacuum cleaner that will stay safely right at the bottom of the stairs while you can go right to the top without having to stretch and clean the full flight of stairs. That's the safest way to do it. So on the Pure Power we do have a very long hose which is stored quite neatly on the back. So it all unclips like that. And as you can see it's a stretch hose and it's also clear when you extend it, when you stretch it out you can actually see through it. So in the event you find you get a blockage in the hose you can actually stretch it out and locate the blockage. So we've got all the onboard tools as I showed you earlier. For this demo I'm just going to use this. It's not a performance demo, I think we've done enough performance testing. This is basically just to see if the machine will reach up to the top of the stairs. Now I can attach if I want to the extension tube but for now this is how I prefer to use my vacuum cleaners if I'm doing the stairs, if it's an upright. I tend to use the nozzle directly onto the handle. So we're going to see if it's going to reach up using it like this. If it doesn't we might need the extra reach of the extension tube. Before we actually use it I'll just show you a little anti-tip hook that Hoover fitted. I just need to adjust the camera down to show you. Now if you see on the back of the machine here we've got this little symbol and it says anti-tip hook and there is a little hook located at the bottom of the filter door. I showed you that earlier. This is the door that comes off in order for you to clean the HEPA filter. And fitted onto the hose is this little collar. And in order to stop the machine from toppling over, now this is not for using on stairs. You don't have this on stairs. But if you're cleaning your upholstery, you actually clip this to the bottom of the machine like so. Let's come away it stays in place, hang on, there we go. So now when you pull the machine along, 
in theory it shouldn't tip over. So that's what Hoover mean by the anti-tip hook. But when you're cleaning stairs you need the extra reach that the hose provides. So you don't actually need to have this connected on the anti-tip hook when you're doing the stairs. But what I suggest you do is turn the machine this way so its back is against the stair so as you're tugging on the hose it's unlikely to topple over. It might lean back but it won't topple over because the, the bottom stair is helping to support it. Okay I'm at the bottom of my stairs now. I've got the camera positioned on the top step so I'm going to hopefully be able to reach right to the top. So here we go. And, hello, as you can see, we have actually managed to reach right to the top step with the machine. Now, obviously when the cleaner's on, the powerful suction, you will be fighting against it slightly because it's going to retract, it's going to want to pull the hose back towards the machine. And you'll find that with any cleaner, Dyson's, any cleaner that has this sort of stretch hose, especially if you contract the end of the nozzle it'll want to pull back into the machine so be aware that especially when you're near the top you might be fighting slightly with the machine um, to clean your final stairs it's easier as you go down so yes it does actually reach right to the top of a standard flight of stairs well summing up would I recommend the Hoover Pure Power bagged upright vacuum cleaner not really, to be quite honest. But in a marketplace that's dominated by bagless vacuum cleaners, there isn't a lot of choice, especially at the lower end of the market. So if you have to have a bagged vacuum cleaner, you don't mind it not lasting much beyond a year, then it's okay, it performs okay, it's not the best built machine, it's quite easy to push, it's not too light, it's not too heavy, in use when you're cleaning regular carpets it's quite easy to push it it moves quite smoothly across the carpet I'm not convinced by the quality of this vacuum cleaner I don't think it's very well made and when I was using the machine over a longer period because uh, like I said I haven't used it very much at all before this demo I wasn't overly confident by the sound it produced it didn't sound very good to be honest let's say the quality of the build matched the sound quality of the machine. It's, it sounds like it's on its last legs and that's after 15 minutes of it being turned on. Now I'm just using my own judgment here. I, you know, I can't say that it won't last a long time. It might do. But in my experience of using an awful lot of different vacuum cleaners, it's not very well made. If your purse can stretch to it, then you want something reliable, you want bagged and you want an upright cleaner, then SIBO for me is the brand to look for. Miele do a decent upright, I'm not so sure about the long term reliability of that machine. It is also absolutely huge, so for most English homes, sorry, or well, British homes, I should say English, most British homes, Scotland you're still with us, most British homes it's probably too big for the Miele. It's a good machine and you can check back on my channel for a full review of that. But there have been people saying that it's not very reliable, there's, there's things wrong with it. But reliability and SIBO go hand in hand. I know people that have had SIBO upright cleaners for many years and they're still performing. So if you can afford to stretch your budget, you want something that's going to last, get a SIBO. You can get them from around £200 for a base model upright SIBO, or you could go for the Felix or the X series. They're very well made vacuum cleaner SIBO, so I do recommend those. That's from personal experience of using the machines. I have many SIBOs still, and I will keep them because they are good machines. They, they perform well, and they're just built very well. It's typical German engineering, very well built. So basically, save up for a SIBO if you can, and to be honest, it's going to pay for itself in the long run, isn't it? If you're going to spend a bit more money on a quality vacuum cleaner or get lots of cheap vacuum cleaners, you're going to end up spending more and sending more of these cheap Chinese-made machines to landfill. But at least Hoover still offers a bagged vacuum cleaner. I give my thumbs up to Hoover for still doing that. But 
The Pure Power is a bit long in the tooth now. It would be nice if Hoover could produce a brand new bagged upright cleaner sometime. But this is all we have from Hoover in the upright bagged category, the Pure Power. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it interesting. If you want to see more, check out my channel. Lots more videos on vacuum cleaners and other floor care products. If you want to subscribe, please do, and you'll be updated every time I upload something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.